All right, it's my first video of 2014. It's a brand new year and one that brings with it many changes. And one of the biggest changes is that effective January 1st, Colorado became the first state to legally offer recreational marijuana for sale, finally giving millions of people everywhere a reason to go to Colorado. All right, if you're from Colorado, just relax. I would have made the same joke no matter what place legalized pot. Truth is, I got nothing against any state. Well, except Delaware. Fuck Delaware! But even though this is a momentous day for Cheech and Chong fans everywhere, it's important to remember that there was once a time when marijuana was somewhat frowned upon. Some would even say vilified by society at large. That's why today we're going all the way back to the 30s with one of the most infamous exploitation films ever made. It's the sweet pill that makes life bitter, women cry for it, and men die for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak, of course, of Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness was originally produced as an educational film called Tell Your Children and was funded by a church group in order to warn parents about marijuana use. However, soon after it was made, the film was purchased by exploitation filmmaker Dwayne Esper, who after adding a few extra shots, changed the title to Reefer Madness and began showing it on the exploitation movie circuit. By the way, if all it takes is a title change and a couple of extra scenes to turn your educational film into an exploitation movie, that's a pretty good sign that maybe you sensationalize the material too much. That's like if I Drink Your Blood started out as an educational film about the importance of preparing baked goods properly. The movie was eventually rediscovered in the 1970s, and today is considered a cult classic. And by classic, I mean that in the same way that Tommy Wiseau is considered a cult actor. <laughs> Plus the movie's public domain, which means I don't have to worry about it getting flagged. Mm. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh look, the movie thinks it's copyrighted. That's cute. It is right about one thing, though. The screenplay to this movie does make me want to hurl. So before the movie starts, we get a text crawl informing us about the evils of marijuana. Or marijuana, as it's spelled here. Yes, marijuana. An insidious narcotic like cocaine. Heroin. Or LSD. Oh, and after informing us that marijuana use inevitably leads to murder and insanity, the text crawl also tells us that they made no effort to exaggerate their research, mainly because they didn't do any. So once the movie finally gets underway, we go to the last line of defense in the war on drugs. Parent-teacher association meetings. You can do it by bringing about compulsory education on the subject of narcotics in general. The great marijuana in particular, because it is only through enlightenment that this scourge can be wiped out. <coughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. What was that? Oh, excuse me, Doc. I didn't mean to interrupt your little speech there. By all means, enlighten us. It might be interesting and important for you to know some of the methods used in bringing these drugs into the country. The weed marijuana is grown in every state in the Union. Of course! The drugs enter the country by already being here! How insidiously clever. Oh, but he's not done yet. This guy actually gives the audience an entire lesson on how to smuggle drugs. They are hidden in fake jewelry cases, in the heels of shoes, books with false scents. Watch cases are convenient hiding places. You can also fill a condom up and then swallow it. I mean, so I've heard. But all that pales next to this little factoid. Recently, a huge supply of heroin was taken. And more vicious, more deadly, even than these soul-destroying drugs, is the menace of marijuana. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. According to this movie, marijuana is worse than heroin. <clears throat> so the next time you're at a party and somebody hands you a joint, do the smart thing and just chase the dragon instead. That's the healthier choice. Let me tell you of something that happened right here in our own city. You probably read about it in the papers. However, I'll give you the real facts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure you will. So the doc tells us about how he encountered the scourge of marijuana in a flashback. It turns out that in the 30s, pot dealers were actually really snappy dressers. Uh-oh, I saw this woman's ankles, which according to the people who made this movie, I think that means we have to get married now. Hey, what kind of a joint is this, Eddie? Oh, it's all right, Gwen. 
See, they probably had a party last night. Oh. Yeah, and it must have been pretty crazy, too, judging from the one pillow on the floor. Oh, and the craziness doesn't end there. Oh, by the way, Ralph, I'm sort of getting a little party Saturday afternoon over at my grandmother's. Well, hopefully he doesn't get out of control like last time. Remember when you put that drink on the table without using a coaster? Anyway, these gangsters spend most of their time trying to get kids hooked on marijuana. Oh wait, did I say kids? I meant people the same age as them. You know, Ralph runs around pretty much in his own. He's been in a couple of jams. Well, I only kind of say hello to him. I don't go around with him. Well, you better not. He's a little too old for it. Yeah, he's 35 and you're only 31. But eventually the gangsters do find some kids that they can get addicted to the demon weed. Our main characters here are Jimmy, his sister Mary, and her boyfriend Bill. Bill's the kind of spineless wiener who wears a sweater vest and a bow tie, which in this movie's reality means he's what all young men should aspire to. You know, after that session we had yesterday, I went home and told Mother that the trouble with her pot roast gravy was she hadn't added three heaping teaspoonfuls of olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't get it. Romeo and Juliet. Don't you like it? Uh-huh. You know, when I study this, I, I kind of think of you as... Yes, Bill's a hopeless romantic. And by that I mean his chances at romance are completely hopeless. It is my soul that calls upon thy name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night. You know, I'll give him points for trying, but I'm glad Rick Santorum gave up his acting career. Yeah, we're not living in sin, I swear. I'll see you tonight, Mary. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Lang. Goodbye. Bye, Bye. 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 Gotcha. Oh! <laughs> Bill. Poor guy. Even at home, the embarrassment doesn't stop for him. Bill, got a girl. Got a girl. Mom, make him cut it out. Yeah, I'm too young to have a girlfriend. I'm only 28. All right, can we hurry up and corrupt these kids already so we can inject some personality into this movie? I think any place. Well, I wasn't going any place in particular. Well, then, how about driving me over to the show's place with me? I'll buy you soda. I never drink that stuff. Soda has caffeine in it, and my mom says that that's the same as being high. <laughs> Two sodas. No, I mean one soda and one root beer. <laughs> Okay, so Bill doesn't drink soda, except for when he totally does. You know, if this movie doesn't even know that root beer is a soda, can you really trust it to give you accurate info on pot? Anyway, the gangsters finally invite the kids back to their place where they're having a party. Bill's obviously a little uncomfortable here, and rightly so. The music they're listening to is clearly making use of a clarinet, the devil's pan flute. But eventually someone replaces his smooth, refreshing tobacco smoke with a marijuana joint. After that, one of the gangsters visits, um, I don't know, Mr. Big, I guess, to tell him about how business is going. How's business? Getting better every day. Those kids sure go for it. Wow. You know, I will say this about these drug dealers. They at least seem to be running a well-organized business. Way more professional looking than the guy I usually get my shit from. I'm just dope enough to draw the line, selling hop to kids. You know what my policy has always been. The boys are not satisfied. I'm always glad to have them retire. Retire permanently. Go on. Yeah, don't fuck with these gangsters. When they say you can retire permanently, they mean that you can exit the building because you no longer work there. Meanwhile, one of the gangsters goes for a ride with Jimmy or Bill or, I don't know, one of the members of the sweater vest gang. Unfortunately, because the kid is high, he drives so slow that it takes them forever to get where they're going and I'm just fucking with it, he actually drives fast. Wow, good thing he wasn't driving a little bit slower. He might actually have hit that guy. No hope for having been around lately. Anything wrong between you two? You didn't figure out that he's a gutless wimp with no personality, did you? Uh-oh, the effects of the drug are so powerful they're actually taking frames out of the movie. What have I got to worry about? Why don't you tell me? Well, for Pete's sake, don't start to cross-examine me, will you? I'm all right. Jimmy! Don't let Mother see you like that. Yeah, I mean, he actually said, for Pete's sake. Such language. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice... But there is an organized gang distributing the narcotics to students. You government men have... 
got to find some way to put an end to it. Oh, um, thanks, Principal, who's telling the story and is also in the story. Apparently. Let me show you something. All leads devoted to marijuana records. I mean, I got Beatles Sergeant Pepper, Are You Experienced, Dark Side of the Moon. Ooh, you ever play that one with Wizard of Oz? It totally sinks, bruh. Here is the most tragic case. Yes, I remember. Just a young boy. Under the influence of the drug, he killed his entire family with an axe. Mmm, yes, I remember that. Wait, no I don't, because you just fucking made it up! You're very welcome, Dr. Carroll. Thank you. Well, at least we're finally done with this guy, and oop, never mind, I guess there's still more of him. Isn't it true that you have, perhaps unwillingly, acquired a certain harmful habit through association with certain undesirable people? All right, I admit it. I listened to a swing band and liked it. I tried to stop jitterbugging, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> you see, I'm... I'm worried about something at home. All right, my boy? We'll just have to let it go with that. <laughs> okay, thanks for all your help, Doc. But despite Dr. Carroll's incredible advice, the kids still decide to keep getting high. <laughs> Hey, looks like Mr. Rogers is about to get some action. Come on, Bill! Come on! Oh, come on! Now wait a minute, Bill. Don't you know that that's how you get... a social disease? Well, let this be a warning to you, kids. You decide to mess around with drugs and you will get laid. Meanwhile, Mary goes looking for the boys and before you know it, Mary Lane is puffing on the sweet... um... The sweet, um... Ah, oh, damn it, what's another word for pot? <laughs> oh, come on, you call that a drug-induced laugh? It's supposed to go like this. Come on! Uh, come on! Speaking of which, looks like Bill's starting to regret his decision. Well, just remember, Bill, VD can be cured, but there's no medicine for regret. Oh, Mary, give me a... Mary! Oh no, she's so high that she's... resisting the guy's advances? Oh wait, never mind, I guess she's going for it. Hey, what the fuck? It's the 30s! Only guys are allowed to cheat! <laughs> hey, watch it with the paintball gun, will you? You could've ruined her dress! She did. Well, that's unfortunate. Hey, uh, should we flip the cushion over to hide the stain? But the gangsters convince Bill that he was the one that shot her, and he instantly believes them. You know, because that's how being high works, right? You have really specific memory loss for about 30 seconds and then automatically believe whatever anyone tells you, right? Right? Yeah. And so, Bill goes on trial for a murder. Okay, Harper marijuana slang? Call me crazy, but I'm pretty sure it was the gunshot and not the pot that killed her. Did you, during the last three months, Notice any changes in the demeanor and attitude of your student, William Harper? Yes? His intake of Cheetos increased by almost double, and he spent his days learning how to play the sitar. There was a serious discussion of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, when he suddenly burst into an uncontrollable fit of hysterical laughter. Ah, yes, laughter. The scourge of modern society. Well, looks like you're screwed, Bill. By the way, you'll notice that the newspaper about the verdict has a little blurb about Dick Tracy solving a crime, which just goes to show how connected to reality this movie is. Well, hopefully the jury will go a little easier on him. That he might have been insane when he did it? No, he wasn't. He knew what he was doing. Yes, the fact that he said he blacked out and doesn't actually remember doing it is proof of that. We gotta make an example. Before boys like that contaminate all of our children. We can't have every murderer hiding behind the gag that he's insane. Sure, they see red before they kill somebody. But whose fault is it? Yeah, fuck mental health. I got a steel boner for killing people. Hang him, hang him, hang him. Meanwhile, one of the gangsters is feeling a little uneasy about blaming the crime on Bill. He's just a kid. Can't hang him. Shut up, shut up. Man, he really needs to mellow out. Does anybody have some pot? We can't let that kid hang. <sighs> See, kids? Marijuana use leads to... having a conscience about taking responsibility for what you've done? 
You know, I am beginning to think that this movie might be a little inconsistent with its facts. Case in point, this scene. See, now this is just another way that this movie is inaccurate. If he was really high, he'd get her to play something like Dark Star by The Grateful Dead. And instead of playing it faster, he'd ask her to drag it out until it was 45 goddamn minutes long. Anyway, Ralph finally snaps and kills one of the other gangsters with a car antenna or something, which causes the police to burst in. No, you don't understand. We only have that stuff because a lot of gangsters suffer from glaucoma. This gives the police enough evidence to create a montage of them busting up the drug ring. Incidentally, I think this is also how the police reacted when they heard King Kong had broken loose. If we can gain some measure of leniency for my client, she's prepared to enter a plea of guilty. I regret that this court is not prepared to bargain with justice. I'll tell him. Uh, he just said he wasn't going to give you a deal. You know, for a seasoned criminal, you're really bad at this. Anyway, she sets the story straight and tells everyone that Bill's innocent. But, with her mind haunted by the memory that she had sex with Bill, she decides to end it all. Oh, come on. You call that a drug-induced freakout? Here, let Helen Hunt show you how it's done. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ralph gets put on trial. Still high, apparently. It is recommended, Your Honor, that the defendant be placed at an institution for the criminally insane for the rest of his natural life. Well, look on the bright side. Maybe you'll end up at Arkham Asylum. That way, in 70 years, you can be in an awesome video game. And so that ends the Doc story. We must work untiringly so that our children are obliged to learn the truth. Well, they're sure as hell not going to get it from this movie, that's for sure. Listen, whether you're someone who uses marijuana or not, just like with alcohol, the important thing to remember is to be responsible and not let it affect your life. But that doesn't change the fact that this movie is a load of fucking bullshit. But that's also what makes it so entertaining. Everything about this movie is so exaggerated and melodramatic that you can't help but laugh at the lengths it goes to try and scare you. It's dated, cheesy, and unintentionally hilarious, and just like with notoriously bad movies like The Room, there's a reason this movie continues to be a midnight movie favorite to this day. But remember, kids, when it comes to taking what this movie says about pot seriously, do the smart thing, and just say no. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Have you ever met that funny reaper man? That thing slightly, lightly, and politely. Why, that cat's still high. Yeah, man! It's wonderful.